Up next is Twitch. We're very, very grateful for Twitch for all their support. We've worked with Twitch for many, many years. Um, Steve Ford is the Vice President of Sales for Asia Pacific. He's been in the gaming industry since 2015, which is longer than anyone I know. <laughs> um, and he's going to talk a little bit about some of the, uh, some of the uh, relationships they have with brands in this part of the world. Marketing is such a huge part of Gaming Matters this, this week. So, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Ford. Hey Steve. Hi Jasper. How um, you doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you alone in a second, but I have to ask you the question. First game. The first game. Well, I've seen uh, the age of the people you've asked that question <laughs> already. I think I'm a couple of years younger, so I'm Galaxians, okay. which is sort of like the next uh, the next generation of start of um, of Pong and Pac-Man and, and that kind of era. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, the stage is yours. Thank you. Can I take your clicker? Thank you. Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. I'd just like to say a quick thank you to Jasper, Branded, uh, all the support team, the Singapore Tourist Board, everybody that's come together uh, to make this event happen today. I'm hugely excited to be back on stage. It's been two years, uh, so if I'm a little rusty, I apologize, uh, but I'm really excited to be uh, with you all here today. Um, so, my name's Steve Ford, I head up the um, sales for Twitch in the APAC region. This is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to start with a short introduction to Twitch, uh, followed by a look into why gaming is a really important space for brands, uh, and an overview of the gaming landscape here in APAC. And we're going to use a real campaign to help guide you on your quest uh, when thinking about creating a brief for your brand in gaming. So first of all, what is Twitch? Uh, let's have a look at a short video. So launched in 2011, Twitch is an interactive uh, live streaming service for content that spans gaming, entertainment, sport, music, and, and so much more now. And at any given moment, there's more than 2.5 million people that come together to interact and share their experiences and their passions uh, on the service. And since 2011, Twitch has generated over 67 billion hours of viewership, and that's enough for the entire human race to watch over eight hours of video per person. But behind all of these hours watched is our community of creators, with over 26 million channels going live through 2020. And so if all of these channels made their own Twitch country, we would be larger than over 70% of all the world's countries. So let's dive into the first section, which will provide the context of why we're here today and give you an overview on why gaming is the playground for brands. So the first thing we want to do is to see how big that playground is. And APAC is the biggest region by gains revenue with over 88.2 billion dollars US of revenue expected this year alone, which is roughly half of the global total. And despite the region's considerable revenues, it will continue to grow healthily towards 2023 and beyond, making it the fastest growing region globally for at least the next two years. And so with 1.6 billion players in this region, how do brands enter the game? Let's find out. So in the last few years, the perception of who and what gamers are has been changing. And gamers are no longer thought of as a niche tribe or a subculture. In fact, amongst the hardest to reach audiences of millennials and Gen Z, playing games and being a gamer is about as mainstream as it gets. And the fact is that gaming leads the attention economy. 
And an indicator of this is the growth in Twitch viewership as demonstrated by the one trillion minutes watched in 2020 alone, which is more than 5,000 years of content each day. And so therefore, it's no surprise to see that brands are investing their marketing dollars in the places where people are spending the most time. And here's a selection of brands we've worked with in the last 12 months here in APAC, who came to Twitch not just to buy ads, but for guidance on how to connect with gaming audiences in a meaningful and authentic way. Now, something we're going to hear a lot about at this year's Gaming Matters is the metaverse. Uh, so what does that term actually mean? Well, as human beings, we live in the physical universe. We have our planet, animals, plants, all the amazing things that we construct for ourselves in the physical universe. However, in virtual worlds, in virtual worlds like Fortnite or the many worlds you can discover in Roblox, humans are spending more time in a world that does not share the same boundaries as the physical universe. And as such, the more time we spend moving from one world to another, the more distinction between what happens in game and in real life becomes blurred. So brands that want to establish a place in the hearts and minds of the younger generations today, they need to define a strategy that clearly understands and defines what their voice, and most importantly, what their purpose is in the metaverse. And right now, it seems that a lot of big brands from a variety of industries are dipping their toes in this space. And we've seen brands such as Gucci, Burberry, Coca-Cola, Netflix, Warner Brothers, all start to experiment. Recently, the luxury brand Louis Vuitton took a rather bold step by leveraging their League of Legends relationship and releasing an exclusive capsule collection that featured the League of Legends universe. And Vans created its own world in Roblox where you can hang out with friends, you can customize your skateboards, you can customize your trainers. And at Twitch, we've worked with brands to create exciting and meaningful experiences for our users that play with the boundaries of the meta and the physical universe. And so we're going to be introducing you to Frank to help us understand this better. So into the main section, every brand has a right to play in gaming, but gaming is vast and it's multi-layered. So understanding the motivations for entering this space and identifying where your brand fits and making sure you make good decisions about how and where you enter is critical. And so we've created a seven-step tutorial that addresses the why, the how, and the what of gaming for brands. And at its core, what we're asking you to think about is, why is your brand entering gaming? How should you show up? And based on this, what should a brand do whilst they are playing in this space? And so, like I said, I'd like to introduce you to Frank. Unfortunately, Frank uh, can't be with us today, so I'm going to use a uh, video to introduce Frank, who represented the brand Pringles. Uh, and this is a campaign that launched earlier this year across eight markets in the EMEA region. Let's have a look at the video. Meet Frank, Pringles' new brand ambassador, a zombie cowboy with a newfound taste for the salty snack, hailing from the video game West of Dead. How do you get gamers to engage with Frank in a world full of so many iconic characters? Enter Twitch, the world's leading live streaming service where gamers aren't just there for the show, they're part of it too. To achieve our goal of taking Frank from six foot deep to stratospheric stardom, we needed to do something <laughs> truly revolutionary. So for the first time ever, we broke a character out of a video game and into the live interactive Everything. world of Twitch. A space where the audience could lead the action and get to know Frank like nowhere else. He came for the Pringles, but stayed for his fans. Frank traversed the gaming world, meeting streamers, playing games, and falling in love with Twitch's community. And wherever he went, they loved him too. Clocking up over 19 years of time watched together. But it wasn't just the gaming community that fell for Frank. So did the world's press. 
With his work done and appetite temporarily satisfied, Frank has plans to return to his home. Naturally, we can't let him go empty-handed. So Frank, we hope you enjoyed your stay. We certainly enjoyed introducing you to the world. Bye! So like I say, really sh it's a real shame that Frank can't be with us here today. I've always wanted to share a stage with a zombie, but I think this is a really great example of brands activating in the gaming space that I've seen in my time at Twitch. So let's return to the tutorial map. And as we talk you through the tutorial, we'll provide illustrations of how Pringles approached the seven principles we'll outline today to deliver a, sex a successful gaming campaign. So to start off, level one, the first thing you will need to do is to ask yourself, why do you want your brand to enter gaming? Your colleagues, your bosses, they're going to be asking you this question as well. And so devising a solid business case and justification for entering gaming is crucial, and it will ultimately dictate how you show up in this space. And so in gaming terms, we can call this checking your quest log. And the three questions on this slide provide the foundation for all the points that follow. Why, how, and what? Why have you identified gaming as an opportunity? How does gaming fit into your overall marketing strategy? And what are you hoping to achieve? Understanding what your business objectives are and how this aligns with gaming and what the potential rewards you are seeking are key. And they're key for your business so that you can assign the appropriate resources and associated budgets the key to garnering the support internally and the commitment from multiple stakeholders, and key to your customer-facing positioning. So how did Pringles answer these questions? Well, the Pringles marketing team had identified gaming as an attractive territory to expand into and create new snacking occasions. And ultimately, their ambition is to drive sales. So gaming aligned with the consumption moment of the product and brought with it a new cohort of potential customers. However, Pringles found that a lot of the decision makers, i.e. the household budget owners, were not amongst this group, and, and so there was some hesitancy there. So they headed straight for the numbers and straight for the data. Their strategy was to learn and then educate the business about the opportunity size proving that the gaming industry is in fact bigger than the music and movie industry combined, the two industries where Pringles had already seen and established themselves and seen success. And so then, using that data, they sought to dispel the stereotypes that the business already had around gaming, proving that gaming is not a narrow, solitary activity, but is in fact far more inclusive, it's social, where friends and family participate together. So after you've identified what gaming and gamers can offer your brand, your next step is to figure out what value your brand can bring to gamers. Or in gaming terms, what are your brand's special abilities? So gamers are always thinking about upgrades or level ups and boosts. So to paraphrase that further, what are the aspects of your brand or product that will add value to the gamers' lives and help them level up. And so, at this point, the question often becomes, how do I define and understand my product special abilities? Well, what you can see on this slide is how we at Twitch would define our special abilities that are valued by our advertising partners. So if we think about how Pringles use their special abilities, to provide value to their audience, we need to take it right back. Now, Pringles entered the gaming space to introduce the brand to new snacking occasions, and their mission was to be the snacking choice for gamers. Their consumer research, their data showed that gamers prefer Pringles as a snacking companion when gaming because it leaves less grease on your hands and controllers. Thereby, they had a valid role to play. Equally, Pringles is about being a facilitator of shared experiences and unexpected social fun. So these become the behavioral as well as the product special abilities that Pringles wanted to highlight to this audience. 
So uh, up until this point, we've figured out our objective and purpose, which help us, helps us establish the why, the why you want to be in gaming. And in level three, we start to think about how you want to present yourself in the gaming universe. And the first thing you'll need to outline is your experience and commitment levels, as this really establishes the parameters and resources that you will allocate and operate within your gaming pursuit. So when Pringles first entered gaming, they were a beginner brand with little experience in this space. They chose to utilize short-term tactical campaigns because they had an association with Xbox, and this lay the foundation with the gaming community. And as their experience grew, so did their commitment. Their earned experience helped establish their authenticity with the gaming audience and allowed them to create more consumer engagement focused campaigns and eventually bring Frank to life. So now, as they progress to armchair general status, i.e. they're considered an established brand in gaming, they can create long-term brand alignment, and they're doing this by sponsoring the League of Legends tour. So the next thing to think about as a brand is how you will show up to this audience. If your brand were to be a game character, how would its gaming avatar look and sound? Being authentic to yourself while customizing your character will go a long way to harvesting authenticity within the gaming culture. And you don't want to be called out in communities for dad dancing. In the meme-driven culture that is gaming, this is really, really important as a consideration. And so remember how we described the metaverse and how Frank came to exist. The question you should be asking yourself is, if your brand were a gamer, what would your persona be? Personality, tonality, these things are really important, but also staying true to your brand values. You should be upfront, you should be honest. You should be honest with your intentions and reasons for being there, but feel free to have fun at the same time. And this is where Pringles becomes a really interesting example because they have adjusted their gaming persona as they gained more experience in the space. Their early characteristics saw them as a facilitator of better gaming experiences, but Frank marked a very deliberate change of their character in gaming from a brand that would play on the perimeter to one that would behave and think like a gamer. And through Frank, Pringles would become irreverent, unpredictable and playful. So they didn't just facilitate the fun in gaming anymore, they were actually creating it. So we've made it to level five, and so far we've established why your brand is entering and the factors that affect how they should show up. Now we'll explore the elements that dictate what your brands can do in gaming and how you should go about deciding what is best for your brand. And so something to consider here is what types of video games would your brand play and why? And as we know, gaming is incredibly diverse, it's multi-layered, it's large, and it's ever-evolving. So selecting your game or your genre or your genres can provide the basis for effective gaming strategies. And connecting your brand to a particular style of play or even a moment in gaming, that provides the directional entry points into the foundation of your campaigns. And as I think I've mentioned a number of times, authenticity is so key when speaking to a gaming audience. So knowing what games your brand would play needs to feel genuine. And it needs to feel genuine in order to speak with authenticity to this audience. So Pringles has always been about multiplayer experiences due to the product sharing, the unexpected social fun, and its special abilities. Before COVID, they focused primarily on games such as FIFA and Mario Kart that you would play in physical social settings. On the arrival of COVID, it changed a little bit with the physical restrictions. So they still see themselves as facilitators of unexpected social fun. But now they've aligned in a personality sense with online multiplayer games that convey this essence. So games like Fortnite, Fall Guys, and League of Legends. Level six. This is where we need to take a look in the brand storeroom. So gaming and Twitch 
We're leaders in the attention economy. So as a brand, you need to ask yourself, what are you giving to people for their most precious asset, which is their time? Celebrating and rewarding the community are key in earning trust and the fame. With the gaming generation that encourages voluntary participation that is sought after by so many of us marketeers. The question becomes, what do you have in your brand inventory that can add value to the experience that you want gamers to have with your brand? So when marketing to gamers, a community first approach is recommended. And when considering the value you can bring, the inventory can take several shapes and forms. And it can range from IP to talent to digital goods and even charity initiatives. For the Pringles Meet Frank campaign, it was the partnership with Xbox that was a crucial asset that they had in their inventory. Using that, it provided the introduction to an innovative game publisher called Raw Fury, who enabled them to create Frank as an in-game character and ultimately bring that ambitious creative concept to life. And then by working with Twitch, Pringles were able to offer this unique experience to gamers who as you may have gathered, responded really positively. And so finally, we reach level seven. Just to recap, by now we have covered why your brand is entering gaming, how you look when you show up, and what you should be doing while your brand is playing. But finally, we need to consider how you will make sure that all this good work, all this effort, reaches the, the uh, digital native audience. And gaming, of course, operates in real time, and it's participatory, and it's interactive and in nature. And the gaming audience expects no less from you and your brand. And so you need to be prepared to invite the audience in. And you need to let them interact with your brand by turning on two-way chat. And as we move at speeds into the worlds of branded metaverses, this piece of advice becomes more relevant every single day. And it's this element that was the core to the success of the Pringles campaign. And it's arguably crucial to any meaningful engagement with a gaming audience. So with Frank, breaking, out, breaking a character out of a game and into the epicenter of gaming culture is obviously an amazing and, and groundbreaking idea. However, it was the interactivity um, that is behind the success of this campaign. Pringles utilize Twitch streamers and their communities and involve them in the heart of the narrative. So they weren't just there to witness Frank emerging, but they played an active part in that process. They were able to communicate with Frank live on stream to the extent that he came out of the game, an antisocial flesh-eating zombie, and due to his interactions and what he learned from streamers and their communities, he returned to the game as a very social, helpful, Pringles-eating zombie. And he then became a non-playable character that you could interact with in the game. So Pringles literally handed over their brand and their brand assets in a live environment and let the audience shape it for them. And that's why it's such a really powerful example of two-way chat. So congratulations, everyone. Uh, we've made it through all seven levels. I really do hope you found that valuable and insightful. Uh, to sum it up, I don't think there's ever been a better time for you and brands to enter the gaming playground and find new ways to connect with the audience. And we hope this seven steps is, is going to give you and lay a positive foundation for that. Um, and remember, at Twitch, we're always here to help. Thank you. <laughs> I kept my face mask on. I've already had my wrists <laughs> slapped for being too close to too close to speakers on stage. Um, Steve, thank you so much for that. Quick question for you: What does the future look like for for Twitch next twelve months? I think. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a really exciting roadmap for the Twitch service. I think the the thing that gets us most excited about in the um, ad sales team is genuinely how brands are going to play in this space. We've We've just seen in probably the last two years some really amazing and sometimes surprising executions and a broad range of brands. And I think 
this idea of playing with the physical and the meta boundaries and the blurring of those boundaries, I think, is actually going to be the most exciting thing to look out for in, in the next 12 months. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for joining us today. Um, Steve Ford, actually, on holiday, jumped off your, your, school, your school holidays this week. My staycation, I cancelled it to be here with you Thank today, you so much. <laughs> well, go, go, go back to the, to the family and thank you so much for being here thank today. Thank you. Steve Thanks Ford. for having me.